so how was your learning for this week? Uh, it was all about background information of ABA, the history and terminology. I really hope you enjoy learning those background information and concepts. So each week after you complete all required steps, I will provide this kind of short wrap-up video that summarizes the week's learning. It can be my narrative or other formats. So this video is uh, to summarize uh, the week one's content. I'll go over some of the core contents or concepts you must take home. Before you leave this week's class, I hope you get several important concepts you really need to know. So these were the main topics that were addressed through this week's reading and requirement. Chapter 1 talks about the definition and characteristics of applied behavior analysis. The world science has come to mean many things, but when used properly, it, refer, it refers to a systematic approach for seeking and organizing knowledge about the natural world around us. Science then has really one overall goal, to achieve a thorough understanding of the phenomena under study. In the field of Applied Behavior Analysis, ABA, this means socially important behaviors. So in the field of Applied Behavior Analysis, people focus on socially important behavior for stakeholders. There are three levels of understanding that yield different types of knowledge within science. Description, prediction, and control, right? You read those things, right? Functional relations only exist when well-controlled experiments reveal that a specific change in the dependent variables can reliably be produced by specific manipulations of the independent and the change was unlikely to be the result of confounding variables. I will talk about functional relation later, more in depth. Science is foremost a set of attitudes that set an overriding set of assumptions and values that guide the work of all scientists. And as you read, the attitudes include determinism, experiencism, experimentation, replication, parsimony, and philosophic doubt. Determinism is the attitude upon which science is predicted, the presumption that the universe is a lawful and orderly place in which all phenomena occurs as a result of other events. Determinism provides the framework in the field of behavior analysis that all behavior is the result of specifiable conditions, and once identified, these conditions can be uh, used to some extent to determine the future occurrence of behavior. Other qualities that guide success in science include thoroughness, curiosity, um, perseverance, diligence, ethics, and honesty. So anyway, these principles and attitudes serve as a basis for behavior analysis. Behavior analysis consists of three major branches of study. Behaviorism, basic research or the experimental analysis of behavior, and applied behavior analysis or the development of a technology for improving behavior. Behavior analysis can be traced back to John B. Watson with what became known as Watsonian behaviorism or stimulus response psychology.
B. F. Skinner is credited, though, as being the founder of the experimental analysis of behavior and wrote extensively on the science. The behaviorism, this behaviorism, differs significantly from prior approaches to the study of behavior, most of which involved mentalism. Mentalism is an approach that assumes behavior is the result of inner causes and hypothetical constructs. Behaviorism aims to explain behavior in terms of measurable and observable events. Skinner's radical behaviorism incorporates private events into an overall conceptual system of behavior, whereas other types of behaviorism do not include private events. Okay, let's talk about operant behavior. One of the uh, first studies to apply the principles of operant behavior to humans was in 1949 by Fuller. The field of applied behavior analysis grew in the 1950s and 1960s as researchers began to apply method of experimental analysis of behavior to determine if principles of behavior demonstrated in the laboratory setting lab with non-humans could be replicated with humans in naturalistic settings. Applied behavior analysis as it is now known can be traced to the words of Aeon and Michael in 1959. The field began to expand and two significant, two significant events marked the formal beginning of contemporary applied behavior analysis in 1969, which is publication of the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis began and the publication Some Current Dimensions of Applied Behavior Analysis by Bayer, Wolf, and Risley. So we are going to read this article in week 6. But let me briefly summarize this article. Uh, this article um, provides recommendations for applied behavior analysis, which later became the field's defining characteristics. These defining characteristics state that applied behavior analysis should be applied behavioral, analytic, technological, conceptual, effective, and capable of generalized outcomes. Uh, if you haven't read the chapter yet, uh, please read this part because this part is really important to understand. And the field of applied behavior analysis continues to grow so there are so many additional characteristics have been suggest but the original defining characteristics uh, as as proposed by Bayer et al remained the standard so please read this part now let's talk about chapter 2 Chapter 2 talks about a lot of concepts that provide information uh, you should know to understand the field of applied behavior analysis. Behavior analysis, study behavior, which is the activity of living organisms. Although the study of behavior includes single responses, Applied behavior analysis are interested in larger sets of socially significant behavior referred 
two as response classes. A response class consists of topographically similar or dissimilar behaviors. All of which have the same effect on the environment. The environment consists of a variety of stimulus events. Stimulus events can be discussed in terms of their physical, temporal, and functional features along with their relationship to behavior. A group of stimuli that share common features among these dimensions make up a stimulus class. Stimulus changes occurring both before, which is antecedent, and after, which is consequence, have one or two basic effects on behavior, which are an immediate but temporary increase or decrease in the frequency of behavior and or a delayed but relatively permanent effect in the frequency of the behavior in the future. Behaviors of interest include both respondent and operant behaviors. Respondent behaviors are elicited by antecedent stimuli. Respondent conditioning occurs through stimulus and stimulus pairing procedures. Respondent behaviors include reflexes, for example, an eye blink to clean the eye and are considered ready-made behaviors where no learning is required. On the other hand, Open behavior is any behavior whose future frequency is determined by its history of consequences. Open behavior are defined by their effects, not by the form of the behavior. So operant conditioning is an automatic process that refers to the selective effects of consequences on behavior. Operant conditioning includes both reinforcement, the effects of which is a behavior increase, and Punishment, the effect of which is a behavior decrease. So as you see in this figure, the term positive refers to the presentation of a stimulus event. The term negative refers to the removal of a stimulus event. So when we say positive reinforcement, it occurs when a behavior is followed by the presentation of a stimulus event and the future frequency of the behavior increases under similar environmental conditions. When we say negative reinforcement, it occurs when a behavior is followed by the remover of a stimulus event and the frequency of future frequency of the behavior increases under similar environmental conditions. So uh, punishment, when we say positive punishment, it occurs when a behavior is followed by the, uh, the presentation of a stimulus event and the future frequency of the behavior decreases under similar environmental conditions. Negative punishment 
occurs when a behavior is followed by the removal, removal of a stimulus event and the frequency, future frequency of the behavior decreases under similar environmental conditions. Consequences either positive or negative only affect future behavior. Consequences select response class, not individual responses. Reinforcing or punishing consequences are most effective when they are immediate. Consequences select any behavior that precedes them whether or not a behavior change tactic is being practiced. Behavior change tactics are the methods derived from one or more basic principles of behavior and utilized by applied behavior analysis. A principle of behavior is a description of the functional relation between behavior and one or more of its controlling variables that has generality across organisms, species, setting, and behaviors. If you are a student who is pursuing BCBA certificate, make sure you completely understand and remember these uh, required core concepts by BACB through this week's contents.